Hey all. <clears throat> so last I left off, Filari Eldarin, the female elf over here, had greeted me as I arrived in the Armarco Cave on the Far East. And now we're just going to make our way out of the Far East um, Cave here, and then we'll uh, say hi to Aaron. Now why don't we do this? I'm not expecting much trouble here. But I should know, I've uh... I've sort of been kind of complacent I think for the last few episodes since I sort of like, you know, beat the master and Urkus and all that. I should know, I'm not, you know, in a position where I'm unkillable, so to speak. I am very killable. I have to watch for that. And I think I just got myself a good heat beam ruin for once. Uh, 16 cooldown, but it scales the strength and it does up to 330 damage over 5 turns. And this is compared to this one, which is also cooldown 16, but does far less. So that's definitely a better ruin to put on over my current heat beam ruin. Black Mamba. That's where I have to go kill a spider. Then get my Brotherhood of Alchemist ingredient. And there's an Ooze Master right there. Interesting. Let's uh, pull him in. And because he can definitely hurt a whole lot, let's see, he's already done gross nature. We used my acid resistance, that's bad. I have to get rid of that or try to. Oh, I didn't get rid of it. Let's do Providence. Let's drop this on him. Um, do this. Do that. Drop this on him. Block. He's not dead yet. He's actually doing quite well to uh, avoid getting killed. He actually got stoned somehow. So his physical damage is actually... Or his physical resistance, I think, has gone up as we use all that, maybe. Or maybe not. He just died. So there's like the first instance, I guess, of something being stoned from my shield. I'm not really sure what it does just yet. In other games, you just petrify them and they stop moving. Not sure what it does here. Let's actually try it. Let's see how try to block. So you just can see stone. What does that do, I wonder? Maybe I'll go check the wiki and we'll find out what it does. And I think that'd be a good thing to do. So one thing you know about um, Steam. If you press shift tab, you can go to, you know, this little screen here. By the way, as you can see, I'm doing it kind of late at night, but... You can go to Tales of Magiel Wiki. And then let's go check the wiki and we'll see what the stoned effect is all about. So, effects. Alright, so this is probably a detrimental effect. So, stoned. The target has been turned to stone, making it subject to shattering. But improving physical by 20%, fire by 80%, and lightning by 50% resistances. So, he's, he's subject to shattering. I have no idea what that does, but he's subject to it. And he has improved resistance as a result. Maybe shattering is another effect. Doesn't look it. But you know, interesting enough, there's uh, stone serve in action. I'll probably want a better shield because I don't really understand the effect of my current one.
Wee. Just hang out here in the Unremarkable Cave. Oh, Blade Horror, how nice. Draw them all in. He draw meat in. And Giant Spire dies too. Alright, well there's the um, Unmiracle Cave done. That was nothing to it. So obviously we'll be doing another dungeon for this episode. Okay, nothing that really interests me, so let's just get rid of it. So, that was very quick. And here we are, in the Far East. And I gotta note, because there's no um, uh, Orc Breeding Pits, I'm kind of worried about the Orc Ambushes that'll be coming after me. So not going to be too worried about going after the Orc Breeding Pits, because I don't think it exists anymore. Hi, Aaron. Hello, Brave New World. And nothing. Always fun. Elven Sun Mage. Hi, Melinda. What if there's anything in one of these shops to uh, buy? Sally doesn't sell jewelry, um, Linale there. Oh well. Alright, well, there's that quest out of the way. Uh, tell me more about the Gates of Mooring. Thank you, my lady. And the May Prize the Orcs. And I'll not leave a single orc ascending. We learned we're Relentless Pursuit. Sorry, I have to go. So we have Relentless Pursuit finally. Very nice. I'm actually sort of worrying what I'm going to do with all these damn talents. I've actually pretty much exhausted all the places I can drop all this stuff. I definitely want to have Relentless Pursuit sort of over here, so... I'm gonna go there. And... As you can see, you know, I'm sort of... shuffling this stuff around at this point. So now pretty much all my escapes and stuff are over here. I should probably leave that there. All the stuff, you know, is like my, I guess, you know, other stuff I'll do. This is the main stuff. That's how I like to have this sort of set up. Assault stuff, main stuff, other stuff. Alright, you know what? Let's go try and find a spire cave. Maybe we'll do that this time around. Is that it here? The way I'm of undergrowth, is that it? Is this the spire cavern that I want to do? I should probably note that um, I'm actually going to do, try and do something very cheeky, I think, um, pretty much for this episode or the next one. I'm thinking about going to all the Orc Prizes to get into their initial interests, just to, you know, visit them, set their levels low. I might just do that. Let's do this. Took a bit of a beating there because I've been washing it, but oh well, we kill everything. Q. 
Kill the spiders. These spiders must die. Is that one after? I didn't get a Alchemist Green from, so I guess not. What am I after specifically here? Alright, so I'm basically looking for a Fairling Fang for Ungle. Fairlings, I think, are a spider, I'm pretty sure. And then the Stormworm Cloth for dirt for the guy in Durf over there. That'd be great to have, I guess, but I'm not too worried about actually getting it. Do 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 do. Hey, that's a, a corpse light lamp. Hey, here we go, the fairling. So I was right. This is where I want to be. Let's kill it. So there we go, we got our failing thing. When we go back to Ungrel there, we'll have their failing thing for him. We can get our foundations. Now, I picked up this corpse light lamp. This uh, lets me vomit on the ground to heal myself, so obviously it's wretch. Very, very powerful. It gives me information radius 4, light radius 3. So if I put this on, I will be able to get the ability to heal myself um, basically 340 damage over 10 turns. And I can also strip myself of detrimental effect apparently with it. That's very powerful. Is it worth it though? The thing about it is that I'm actually placing um, 4 light radius for basically four information radius, spell critical, spell power, ch and changes to my resistances and all that. I'm actually not sure this is as powerful as it is anymore. It, it would be more powerful for me if I was, you know, playing a little bit earlier, but it's a little late finding it now. It's one of these things about this game, you know, you, there's some powerful items you can find early on, or skills and such, but they get weaker the later on you go. I mean, Rex is a powerful ability. But I'm wondering if it's really that powerful this late in the game. I love how there's cut purses and stuff on the Far East. We were young. Uh, Ruxlings. Ruxlings are always fun. Let's do this so I can hurt them back a little bit. I think the Ruxlings took their own damage from that. Do this. Slowly killing everything in here, you know. There's our shilling ruin. That's something to check, by the way. So, this shilling ruin will last for five turns, by the way, and so it's ruin reflection. But it should be noted that some ruins that, you know, the shilling ruins, they can last a lot less than that. Good they're lasting at least five turns, though. So. Do, 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 do. Just clean the first level of the Iron Hoggle Spider Cave type area. 
Don't do this. But it's definitely a good thing to have the nice light rays at this point. Being able to see almost as far as my light as my vision rays is very nice to clear out places for sure. So there's the corpse light um thing there. If I find another corpse light that's higher tier, it might be worth looking into, but I'll say that was just not worth my time for now. It might be. I could be wrong, but I'll assume it isn't. Let's do this. Um, let's do Irresistible Sun. Hey, my confusion went away. That was fun. Up a little bit. Ah, uh, he could be trouble. Let's do Irresistible Sun then. That was fun. We'll probably get a little before we get out of the spider cave here. Oop, there's a dread. It wasn't too tough to kill. That blood horror up there. Let's do this. Okay, what does fear escape me? This is not a good place to be fear escaped in. Um, this guy. Okay, well, he'll die quick enough. He's died. Let's drop this on. Let's do some blinding of our own. He attacked the wrong way. Very nice. Ouch, what hurt me so damn much? Probably the damn uh, hex effect that damn corruptor type spider had on me. Do this. So, it's worth knowing, by the way, I haven't really leveled anything in uh, Weapon of Light here. I've actually, you know, not had any light um, type problems for like the past few episodes. So I'm actually thinking about, I actually should get this up a little bit more. Especially now I've got Reposte up this much. Uh, I eventually got this up to four, which basically allows me to get two counter strikes uh, blows on anything that, you know, has longer than three, you know, turns of uh, counter strike on it. And also I have increased kill chance when I counter strike on stuff, so Reposte is da damn very well good. But I'm not going to blow up this anymore. It's funny, I spent basically a comment point just to get the rush, because it's so needed on the uh, Sun Paladin. I might want to get Comrade Beckham, but we won't worry about it now. Basically, when I'm thinking about, I just want to basically drop my points in here, here, and here. One there, maybe four there, maybe two here, rest here. That's all the way. We're almost up to level 33. So I'm happy with that. I probably will get repost a up to 5, but we don't do it right now. We'll do that later. Probably start leveling up weapons a little bit more. Because I'll need more damage for my low damage character. Let's move that mouse a little bit over. There's a Storm Drake. Oh, a Storm Worm. We finally found a worm. Hello, worm. Let's say hi. We'll do 
this. I love how I can still see you, even though I can't see you. Drop this there. Drop this on. Bye-bye. Uh, that giant gravity worm sort of scares me a little bit. Let's do this. Let's actually do this. And I'm going after him more so than anything else, because he's the threat here to me, I think. Uh, can't get through him, so you know what? We're just going to go through him. Oh, he dropped that crap on me. This will not be fun. Heh, he got Counter-Strike on himself. Of course, I can't get to him at the moment, so... I'll take that level. Let's get rid of him. I love this sort of, you know, Earthquake uh, type effect here. That's kind of annoying to understand your position and all that. Get Hummerhorn. Yep, just waiting for stuff to get close so I can kill it while I regenerate a little bit. Alright, well, time point time. Um, let's wait a little bit for putting our last point to fix skin, I think. I probably should level up uh, this other stuff a little bit more soon. Weapons mastery for more damage. This for more armor and stuff. I've actually got a lot of stuff to level up. On the generic points, the um, Sun Paladin Skull is not uh, light on what he has to spend his stuff on. They're out of the way. I just want to kill them before we uh, start taking off our armor. Okay, this gives me. A cooldown of 15. And does less damage than the other ruin. Is this worth replacing, I wonder? This is actually kind of nice for damage, even though it's not a main thing I'm actually going for with heat beam ruins. I suppose, though, that's the thing. It's not the main thing I'm really using the heat beam ruins for. So this is definitely worth replacing just for the increased... Um, the ability to use it more often when I need it. Um, my spell save and stun freeze immunity. I kind of like the other saves I get from that, though. So, we're still going to keep our, uh, crappy rings. Or this crappy ring rider. Ah, uh, this is still a lot. <clears throat> and let's start equipping stuff. We put on you. I have no idea what natural balance does, but I just used that and didn't really get anything from it. I do get 2% more damage though, so I'm happy about that. Put on you. Soon, soon I'll be dropping tons of this stuff because I won't be using it anymore. Alright, what's my con up to? It's enough. Which means I no longer need to carry around stuff just for the con item. Though, it is nice to have this up to 60. Um, before I do that... Yep, guess what? So even though I don't have, you know, that much... Um, talents points in the uh, con tree, or, you know, con stat, I can pick up con institution-type prodigies if I want to when I, you know, get to level 42. 
So if I want to I get Spy of the World here, I could get Eternal Guard. These are all pretty nice stuff to have. Um, I'll never really get to Chronic Body, sadly. I, I could, that's doable. I can't get that for obvious reasons. Or that. Eternal Guard would be the main thing I want to get from uh, the Contra. I should probably decide what I'm going to do here. So, right now I've spent one project point. It's an Irresistible Sun here. And that, that's a damn powerful talent that I'm very happy I picked up. Um, I won't say anything bad about it because there's nothing really bad to say about it. I don't really need any of these sort of strength combat um, you know, prodigies, so I'm basically looking at um, magic over here or either willpower, cunning, or dexterity stuff. I'm actually thinking I might go for arcane might. Apparently, someone said it is fairly decent to your damage. Basically, it gives you 50% um, magic modifier, so 50% uh, of your magic stat will be applied to your, to your weapon. So if I uh, just show off my current weapon here. This weapon here, it basically uses a stat 100% for strength. Drake's Bane, that uses 120%. Um, must be able to both hands though. This one here, uh, the Blade of the Sword of Time, that takes 20% magic and 9% strength. So I guess with um, the magic modifier, I get 70% magic, magic modifier from this 90% strength. So 9% of my strength would be used to affect the damage, and then 70% from the magic um, would be used to affect it. If you can understand the language. Basically, magic is used to um, augment my damage stat. So, it is, I guess, somewhat good. But it's, it seems like very low to me because a magic um, hybrid like the Sun Paladin is not something that I think would do very well with that. Um, that's not useful. That's not useful. Cauterize, I hate. Mystical Cunning, I won't be able to use. Revisionist History, nope. Um, Spectral Shield, apparently, is kind of bland. By infusing your shield with raw magic, you block with any damage type. That's kind of cool, but um, the problem with Spectral Shield, apparently, is that you basically can get that from your shield itself. If you have the appropriate resistance on a shield, it'll block it. So, there's that. Experience, I'm possibly looking at other stuff. So, there could be Garkul's Revenge to get. That's obviously worth, you know, thinking about, but again, damage is probably not my my strong point. Um, I don't think I'll ever want to get close to 1 HP before killing something, so we won't worry about that. I actually probably will get to 1 HP, perhaps, maybe with Second Life and stuff, but hopefully it'll never happen. Um, that's anti-magic only, Sally. This has a cooldown, so I'm actually thinking that none of this is going to be helpful, so I don't think I'll worry about willpower. I'm actually, you know, using this sort of like these prodigies to sort of determine what stat I'm going to go for. I've heard that um, basically for some pounds, if you get more dexterity, it's actually really good for tanking, and um, obviously you get more accurate with like, you know, assault and stuff like that, so defense, accuracy, both very good for my character. And I could get some stuff like Crafty Hands, which I don't really care about. Uh, Giant Leap, I've, I, I'll actually say this by the way, this seems like a very lackluster um, ability, Giant Leap. But it's extremely powerful, and for the Sun Paladin, it'd be very strong. So I'm actually... I might want to go for this, if it's you know worth my while. I haven't heard good things about Roll of It. Swift Hands, I don't think that's very good. Fruit of Crowd, Neither Vital Shot is not my type of thing. I'm not a two-hand weapon character, and Wintook Speed is apparently very low... Uh, where it's not something I'm going to be able to get, but it's very low global speed for some people, but I actually think it would be strong if I was a anti-magic. I haven't heard much about that stuff. I have used I have a Tiger before, obviously used on my Shulam Berserker, it's very nice, but I don't think it'll benefit this character too much. You know what I'm thinking? I'm actually going to probably go after Giant Leap over here. So I'm probably going to be training my Dexterity up as my third stat. Okay, let's wield you. I no longer really have to worry so much about Constitution, so this is actually something I can get rid of now. Um, I'm keep, keeping Drake's Bane. I don't know why I'm keeping Drake's Bane. There's really no point to it. I'm, it's a two-hand weapon. I'm never going to use those. 
You're done. Don't need you. Piercing gaze. We'll, uh... I get more base power from this current shield I'm whirling. I get less resistances to some of the stuff. And block value. The main thing about this is I like it for the armor. Hmm. You know what, I'm going to stick up the piercing gaze just a little bit longer and then hopefully I'll find a better shield to replace both of these. This I'll probably never use, so don't worry about it. We'll just get rid of it. One of these I was using. I was using um, this one. This hat here. Good hat. I'm going to keep it more or, more or less for that uh, plus 10 dexterity gives to it, because plus 10 dexterity will let me get to my prodigy faster if I need to. And um, am I ever going to keep use this? I was using the Spire Silk for a con boost recently, but I don't think I'm ever going to find anything better than the Untouchable. This is actually really powerful armor. I actually think it's overpowered for what it does. Um, I mean, this offers, I guess, better armor and defense. But that's about the only good thing it does. So you now we're going to get rid of this. Just cleaning this all up, you know. That gives 10 spell save, physical power, con, max of stance, spell power, mind power. This is good. Light regen, sun freeze immunity, saves. It's not bad, but nah. I prefer the other one. I'm keeping that for mana, which I never yet ever got. You know what? Um, this is actually not useful to me. I was keeping that amulet because I might pick, pick a premonition, but I never found a seer, so that won't be happening. You won't be used. I'm going to keep this for another character if I get, you know, back to my storage. I actually wanted to put that in, but I forgot to do so. Oh, well. And you are no good to me. And a useless but, useless but awesome rock is still awesome. Well, let's see what we can do. Disrupt this here. Kill it all. It should be long before we get to the end of this uh, dungeon. You're a Shadow Blade, aren't you? No, you're cursed. And you got blindside bonus on, on me. Bastard. Let's do block and a counter strike to a death. Alright, well, that's it for level 2, so we're off to level 3. I think that's the end of this dungeon, specifically. I'll be very happy to clear out this area. Bye-bye. Hey, there you are. The Ungol. You will pay. Well, not really pay, you'll just die. And there's a Master Vampire, but we don't really care about him. Let's drop this. Um, looks like my block didn't do anything. Oh well. Let's drop this. You've got heroes and that'll be fun. Drop that there. It's blind. You blinded me, you bastard. Well, let's do this. And that failed. Oh, let's use Relentless Pursuit because I can. That's instant. Very nice. You're blinded. And now you're taking massive damage. Alright, I've been sent to your wife. Lead the way. And apparently the rod of spirit poison is actually useful. 
So I've heard. It can be used to shoot a bolt of spiderweb poison costing 25 power. Um, I think it's possibly an item that you can just use. I'm not sure. I should test how this works. Spider poison. This is a long sword. That's tier 4. It has a 50% fire conversion. It gives 7 strength, 7 will, and you breathe fire in a frontal cone. A very interesting little blade, but not something that really interests me specifically. I don't think. Okay, let's try this out. So, I have you. Let's just shoot this at you. You've got a little bit of nature resistance, so I hit him for nature damage. I'm wasting away, apparently. I'm not sure how that really works, but I'll well, we have it if I need it. It's not something that, you know, I have to sell, or it's not something that takes up the inventory slot, so I can keep it for that reason. All right, there we go. Out we go. So, this is more of like, you know, management for, you know, my, my character, so to speak. Not a whole lot out, outside of that. I don't think I'll be using this blade, so I won't really worry about keeping it. I got that achievement because you know why not so my characters managed to um, basically save that sun paladin oh, there's that dungeon the underwater one ah you killed it let's see how powerful the orc patrol is all right, well, basically, we've got the Orc Warrior and Corruptor. It's basically just average, set to my level, all that. Um, let's uh, rush him. Do Irresistible Sun. Basically, flash these guys. Everyone died. And we got one of these guys, that'll be fun. And here's Sun Paladin, I think. Let's do block. And my block's still active. It was active. Oh, well, you confused me, you bastard. You're not a Sun Paladin, you're a Norfil, you're worse. Step here. Let's drop this on him. He struck it off, the bastard. Drop that on him. He's got Corona on, that'll be fun. Drop this back on. He's dead. So that was that little battle. I managed to pick up a shield, which I probably won't use, and this. This is the Longsword Amalus. The Ioni Hilt of Blades seems to glare at you, piercing your soul and mind, tentacles surround to hilt, lashing onto your hand. It reduces my mental save by crap, and it torments the target with many mental effects. Special effects when this uh, weapon kills reduces loss of mental save. Interesting, does that mean it'll go up? That might be worth looking into. Okay, you know what I'm thinking of? Let's possibly just go up to the... the Sea of Yal over here. 
I don't exactly have to breathe, so I can, you know, stay here and do this dungeon. So, m maybe next episode we'll do the Flooded Cave, and then after that we'll explore the, um, the East, the Far East Continent. So this will be good. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.